when I was going through that, I wasn't angry at anyone. Now I love Nasdaq because I understand why does it, why is it volatile at half past three. I learned on this day with a thousand dollar. I don't want to learn in ten years when I have a hundred thousand dollar account. Mm -hmm. What's up traders, non-traders, everyone who's watching, thank you. We are back again with another season of Market Masters with myself, Nubile Tembani. And this season again, guys, will bring you guys some of your favorite traders, some of the top traders, some of the most talented traders in the industry right now. And today I'm joined by somebody who's been a staple in the game, if I, if I can put it that way. Because you've been around for so long in the game. Like, you really have been around. I've actually followed you for quite a very long time, actually. Yes, bro. I've, 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 been, I've been at it. Yeah. And then when, when I was checking my DMs the other day when we were speaking, yeah. I said, bro, you wanted an interview in 2018, yeah. bro. Yeah. Like, yeah, so this time I need to do it. I just, I just have to do it. Yeah, you know? so yeah. I'm sitting here with Lana Luanda, but you call, you known as Lana, Lana Forex. Yeah. Yeah, that's what yeah. most people know you as. Yeah. So yeah, so you've been in the game, like I mentioned, you've been around for a minute or so, actually. Yeah. Like, going back to, like, what, 2017? Or what yeah. was it? Um, we started talking 2017 late, probably, around that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I was already trading at that time. Yeah, but yeah. I'm talking about you right now. Like, yeah. When did you start, like interacting with the markets with but I actually started um, what can I say 2015 oh, right 2015 yeah. but I wasn't profitable I never made money yeah. that day. <laughs> I won't lie you know yeah. then 2016 and started meeting other guys because at 2015 I was learning through trial and error yeah. I didn't have no mentor no nothing straight YouTube um, PDFs and whatever so that year was wasted basically because I was was it wasted though what? definitely was bro you know you know you know uh, I wish I met the, the guys I met in 2016, in 2015, okay. you know, so that year was wasted for me, you know, because okay. I was losing money. At that time I was working, so I get paid money and find an account, blow it. <laughs> Kept doing that the whole, yeah. every, the whole year. Yeah. Then 2016, okay, I started seeing some profits. Okay, this is what, a withdrawal, okay, now there's a withdrawal. Yeah. Then from there, things just took off. Yeah, but like, weren't there any like lessons that you were learning during that 2015 when you were just like blowing money one way? Honestly, when you are gambling, there's nothing to learn there. Because <laughs> I was gambling, <laughs> honestly. I, w I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. Just, but what I knew is that buy, it's going to go up, <laughs> sell, it's going to go down. When it goes the opposite, yeah. I panic. Yeah. I close early or I hold a loss for too long. Yeah, yeah. so it was just working against No you. lessons learned from gambling. Mm. That was gambling, I won't yeah, lie to you. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. but you came in at a very peak time, especially in the South African uh, industry per se, where Forex was like now becoming yeah. a household name. At the time, where it was like really busy, had all the big guys yeah. with there and all that. I know you were rolling with some of them. Yeah, of course. Uh, from yeah. the guys from Go Forex yeah. to Jason. Mm, uh, yeah. He was around that time. Yeah, he yeah, was yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. No, at that time it was cool being a trader. Yeah. It was just cool. <laughs> it was just, just, just being like a rapper or something. Yeah. Like you're a trader, then you, you must be a cool guy. Yeah, you know? Because yeah. even the guys you just mentioned, mm. um, I remember when I was learning through trial and error 2015, I was doing it with my friend. Mm. We we're doing the same thing together. Yeah. And then we were tired of it. We tired to kick, bro. We keep blowing money. What, what's the solution? How do we go forward from this? Like, listen, I'm, I'm gonna take a class. Yeah. Then he took the go forward class. Mm -hmm. I used to drive from the S rand to Sentin. Remember the Maslow? I chill in the car. He goes inside. Yeah. On our way back to the S rand, he's telling me what he learned inside. <laughs> you know. So in a way, yeah. I, I'd say I took some lessons from go forex, yeah, right? Yeah. And then from there, um. He became so good, then they made him a mentor at Go Forex, yeah. and I wasn't because I'm not their student. Yeah. I was like, okay, let me pave my own way. I started Langer Forex. Yeah. Then from there, bruh, yeah. telling you deals, trading. Then yeah, I had to quit my job 
You had to quit your job. I had to quit my job. Bro. I remember at that time I was 22. Okay. I was earning 14k, 15k. Mm. Had a, had a nice apartment in Springstown. I lived there. Yeah. And then our second year of me training, I bought my house. It's a nice two bedroom house in a small estate. Okay, now already for me it's a plus. I'm, I'm moving from, I'm coming from Newcastle, bruh. Yeah. The best thing you can do is to wear a back room, have a microwave, in a fridge, in a DSTV. <laughs> so now I have my own place, yeah. right, because of Forex. Then fast forward six months later, I get a car. All this money is from Forex, bruh. I'm telling you, it's from Forex. Usually I had commissions also from other deals I had. So by the time you man then, I don't see this 14K. Yeah. 14K, I spend it in the weekend, <laughs> you know. So I started not going to work. Yeah. And then just to preserve my reputation at work. Because I don't know, what if Forex fails and I need to come yeah, back. Yeah. So, okay, listen, let me quit. Then uh, I was doing a night, afternoon late shift. I was leaving work at 10. Convoy with my friend. We had man, we lived in the same estate. Same shift, but we used two cars. Yeah. It was unnecessary, <laughs> but we did it, you know? Yeah. So I called him, he's driving behind me. I'm like, bruh, I mean, I'm tired of this thing, bruh. And it's a, it's a Thursday, we need to go to Devon, okay. and it's night shift. Oh, yeah. So we're going we're gonna to mess up our reputation again. Like, uh, listen, go on Google, copy and paste the resignation letter, <laughs> edit, send it to the supervisor. Yeah. They called the same time. Yeah. No, you guys in the Paisisana. Why didn't I change it? When I'm from Zulu, I say hello, I call it. Now when we feel cold, we say hi, you know. And it became a huge issue. The next morning, I call one of my close friends at that time also, Sean Benjamin. Oh yeah. Gives me the Mustang, bro. I go drop off the paper, the hard copy of my resignation letter in a Mustang. He said, No, you wanna lose in forex? You wanna come back here? I'm like, guys, I drive a PM. I drop off my resignation letter in a Mustang. Yeah. I'm never coming back. Here. <laughs> I'm gone. That was it. I was done. I was done. Bro. I was done. Yeah. You know? it was, it was cool, man. Yeah. Exynos offers a free demo trading account for beginner traders to trade on. The demo account interface is ideal for traders who want to practice their strategies or learn to trade without incurring any trading risks or losses. You can practice trading in a 100% risk-free environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's really cool though. So, what other stories do you have from like back in the day when things were like really wild back then? Bruh, a lot happened, bruh. A lot, <laughs> a lot happened, bruh. You need to give me at least lot, one story bruh. right now. <laughs> you need to give me one story right now. Nah, bruh. <laughs> But I put me in a position. Yeah. Man. No, I don't have to mention mm. any names. I just, I'm just asking for one. How wild? Yeah. No, not too wild. Though. Not too wild. Like, obviously, right now. Okay, you, in you context, see, to what? Okay, no. You see yeah. what's happening right now? You, mm. you, you guys are making money. You just mm. quit your job right now. Mm. Now you're just living that life of being a trader mm. full time. So you're going full time into trading at yeah. this point, correct? Mm. Yeah. So like, obviously, the changing from like now not working. No, from working to yeah. not working, like, is there anything that was happening during that time where you look back and, like, this was actually a moment for me where, you know, you felt like this was a defining moment for you that you needed to place that trade or you needed to do something during that period? Well, you know, um, there was a miscalculation that was done, right? First things first is that now I'm making, let's say, 50,000, mm. right? I'm working shifts. So now if I quit my job, that means I'm going to make 100. Right. Okay. But now the miscalculation in that is that you are also exposed to twice the risk. Okay. Yeah. If I could lose ten thousand, now I'm losing twenty thousand. Sure. Right. That's when the miscalculation was, and then I'm coming from an environment where I was working, so I had some discipline. Mm. Right. I hey, guys, this weekend I'm 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 at work. I can't go, can't drink this much because it's panini, snippet alive. You know, that gave me that discipline. Right. Now that thing is no longer there, right? I'm drinking Monday to Monday. Mm. When do I get time to work? Yeah. Right? Next thing, um, I'm spending twice the money I was spending, mm. but I'm making less now because I'm not trading as much. Mm. The goal was to quit work and trade more. Mm. But now you get a call, gents, convoy Devon, in, 
right? You come, you leave on Friday, you come back on a Thursday or on a Wednesday. Mm. Now, you, looking, looking at the money you've wasted on that trip, you want to make it back quick. You go into the markets blindly, you lose again. Mm. Then now, money was coming out a lot and I wasn't making much. Yeah, yeah. At that moment, that's when I knew, like, yo, I think I made a mistake. Right. Yeah. Remember, I'm two years in, only one year profitable. Now, when I'm brewing accounts, I don't have a source of income to fund these accounts. Mm -hmm. But I had that commission with whatever. But now my spending, my spending Increases is the more, problem, more bro. Problems. And the friends that you have, <laughs> bro. Now, I'm no longer chilling with the, my colleagues who are happy with a, a box of Corona. These new guys, yeah. two hennies at least, bro. Yeah. At that time. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, yeah, sorry. A lot, a, lot, a lot happened during those times. Kid, yeah. Deben trips, convoys, mm -hmm. um, new guys coming in. Now, um, at that time, I remember this one trip went to Deben. Right? Deben, I, had, I just bought the car. Bingo, bingo, fire is thick, right? Of course, I go to go for guys, gents, listen. We, give me your, your plug. Go to Deben, convoy, you get there. They had a trap house that yeah. our partners <laughs> didn't know about. But it was there. Yeah. Right? There's a video that's very famous, like, hey, Kali Khan, Makum 45. Yeah, I've seen that's it. the trap house yeah, place. You <laughs> get the park. <laughs> Things that were happening there. Yeah. Yeah, motivating some with like, a bit too much. Yeah, you yeah, know? Of course. Yeah. Because it goes, for me, it was easy to also pull myself to my. It was easy for me to pull myself to myself because mm -hmm. the background I come from yeah. and this. I could see there was a disconnect, and I could see, okay, now, how do I preach this? How do I go back to Ulianda or Pumae, Newcastle, yeah. to now going in Devon at any time? Yeah, and, you want. Bro, mind you, I left Devon because I didn't have money for my studies. I had to quit. Okay. You know, so now I come back to Devon. So we came back in, we came back in, we came back in, we came Yeah, I've came up, you know. Yeah. But... I pick around I'm going to say it's okay. Mm -hmm. You're doing a bit too much. Yeah. You're at your last 10,000. What are you going to do now? You understand? So what you're saying is that you were literally at your last 10,000 rand. Even, wo even worse, bro. Even worse, bro. It's deep. Even worse, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you, serious. Yeah. yeah, serious. But you know, you touch on such a very crucial uh, topic where people right okay so obviously being a trader is something that's like so needed for people to do but people want to be traders full-time mm. but eventually it gets to a point where especially for people who are working they'd be like no i'm leaving work now i'm gonna go trade full-time which is what you mm. did yeah no so like what was that the biggest shift like mindset shift that you had to tell yourself during the period of like you know what um i'm leaving work and I'm going to trade full time. No, or rather, shall ask, what was the biggest lesson you learned from that period? Um, firstly, Guti, you can do it both. Okay. Essentially, you can do it both. Um, and as I said earlier on, is that as much as you want to make, you are looking at making, you're looking at the reward. Yeah. The risk also is twice as much, mm. right? So you need to put, you need to factor that, and also not having that cushion to fall back to gives you pressure. And now you are not trading as good as you were trading having that cushion, mm -hmm. right? As much as people want to tell you, um, when you have your back against the wall, that's where you perform, throw yourself in the deep end. Bro, that's lies, man. Mm -hmm. It's nice knowing that, um, listen, I have a $10,000 account, 10,000 rand account, yeah. sorry. Um, month end, I'm getting paid 20K. So this 10,000, I can trade with it. Because now, also, you know, you don't have any things that you need to cover month end. That's covered by the salary coming in. You don't have pressure to, to, to try and push this 10,000 to 50,000, you know. Having that cushion makes you trade properly, clean. You, do, you know, you don't have any pressure, everything is good, you know. Yeah. So not having that cushion, thinking that you wanna perform better with your back against the, the wall, it's false, man. Mm. You cannot perform under that pressure, knowing that, no, I have to pay for my car, I have to pay for, for this. Yeah. You want to blow that account. Mm, that's so true. And then now you are in even deeper debt. Yeah. You know. So if you can do it both, just do it. Mm. You always talk about multiple streams of income. Yeah. Your salary is one of those. Mm. You and, know? and people tend to not see it as a. As they a don't. 
They and don't. They don't. <laughs> they don't, man. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No. Okay. Um. So, thing is, I'm very curious though. Yeah. <laughs> when you say you were down to your last money and yeah. whatnot, uh, so you get to this point right now. What's your next move right now? You've left work. You traded all your funds away. You're spending yeah. and whatnot. So you get to this point where it's just like now it's deep now. Man, you know how I came back up. Yeah. Um. I was doing copy training okay. with one of the brokers, yeah. right? So now, the more I trade, the more commission I get, uh, right? Yeah. Um, still on that, let me just clear this out. Um, when, you're, when you're doing copy trading, right, and then your clients lose money, mm. you won't get anything, right? Mm. But now when you're doing copy trading and your clients make money, that means if you were trading $100 accounts, now they're at $200. You're making more commission because the bigger lot size, the more the commission. So now your goal as the master trader, you must grow these accounts because mm. that's where your money comes from. Mm. Once you blow them, you are done, yeah. right? So there's this misconception where people say, no, you blow people's accounts and it comes to your pockets. <laughs> does that make sense? Does that make sense? It doesn't. So now the more, the more I grow your account mm. that's linked to my account, mm. I'm getting more commission. Mm. I'm not using 0.1 today, I'm using 0.2 because your account is bigger. Mm. So the bigger the lot size, the bigger the commission, yeah. right? So I was doing that. I don't have no money. I'm down for, I'm out, yeah. right? Had some friends who did, okay, I brought here 10K, right? And those friends are not even trading. Of people that I, I've met along mm -hmm. my journey, right? And then next thing, I'm down, I'm out. Surprisingly, I had commission stashed. Or I didn't withdraw for two months. Mm. That thing came to, I remember, I just still have the screenshot, I'll yeah. show you after this. Yeah. $3.8, that's like 50k, I'm like, good lord, I'm back. Yo. That's how I came back. Sure. With money, I didn't know. You know when, you, when you're stressed, yeah. you're checking your old emails, <laughs> you're checking everything. You're making sure uh, you didn't forget You're looking something. for gift cards, like, you know, you know all those things. And I found it, like, what? I haven't withdrawn this money for two months. Mm. It's like $3.8. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And it's mine. I don't owe anyone. It's yeah, mine. It's yours. Yeah. So now I'm I'm comfortable with. Okay, so you're yeah. able to trade. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So was it a little? Would, would you feel like now that coming to like almost hitting rock bottom, coming back up again? Do you feel like you're a bit more disciplined with that with those with that fifty k? Of course. And now and, and and that's a problem. Now I'm more stingy. <laughs> yeah, it's a problem for me. I'm not I'm not comfortable with opening bigger yeah. lot sizes. So that means I'm not making as much money. Because now I'm scared of losing it. Yeah, of that, that, that was the issue at that time. Mm. Listen, I know where I was yeah, a yeah. month ago. I don't want to go back there, you know. But how do you deal with that fear of like overcoming to lose money, if I can put it like that? Because yeah. right now you were living, you were trading from a place of fear right now. Yeah. yeah. So were you even making any money at all? Of course, yes, I was. Because remember, I come from a, a month ago, I didn't have nothing, right? I lost it, yeah. right? Now, even $100 or something, yeah. right? So now I'm starting to rebuild, mm. right? The right way, I'm rebuilding. $100, $200, dollars At that time, bro, I'm telling you, no one was making, no one was flipping accounts. Yeah. If you can go back to 2018 Arab and beyond, yeah. no one was flipping accounts. Yeah. This thing of putting in 10000 and making 50, same day, it wasn't happening. Yeah, right? yeah. $100 was, was like, one will pay hundred dollars of a tanga phone with a tangent market. So true. So now if you're making that daily, mm -hmm. if you're making that daily, now you start seeing it, okay, listen, I'm rebuilding this capital. Yeah. Right. Then you start stashing again. Yeah. And remember now the, I'm back to trading. Yeah. I'm still generating that commission because now I'm ah, trading. Yeah, yeah, so I had that cushion was like a salary for me. Yeah. <laughs> I know when the fifteenth commission is coming every through. Month, yeah. Month, you know, yeah. now the problem is I'm spending less now. Okay. Yeah. Because also you lose some friends that during that period, you know. Mm, yeah. That's so true. And also back by like normally uh say hamba, say coupon. Not slalish was name, but I say coupon I said well next weekend. Oh no, I'm a petrol. I would see back here. Oh no, I'm not fun about petrol. I find the back foos is dog. You can't you understand. Yeah. So now when they leave you behind, it's not because uh bus snacks and that. Okay. They just they can't take care of you, man. Yeah. Like, go free your stuff off and come back up. Hindo, <laughs> Hindo, it's like, and it's matter. Abang can over meet us on 20 something. Yeah. You can't expect them to be, to, to support you, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, they can have your back. Okay, listen, bruh. I'm gonna make sure 
your basics are taken care of. Mm. But for a woman, come on, man. Yeah, come you on. can't, come man. On. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? So I'm, I'm not, when I was going through that, I wasn't angry at anyone. Okay. Because oh, okay. I understood, okay, listen, these guys, I met them there. Mm -hmm. And they're, so now when I'm here, I can't expect them to come back. Yeah. No, I'm going to catch up with them. It's yeah. fine, yeah. you know. Hmm, it was easy. That's, that's why I'm still right friends there. with them. That, that, yeah. That's wisdom right there. Because I think there's this perception of when days are dark, friends are few. And I guess. <laughs> but when did you meet these people? You met them at the top. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they're not your day ones. Yeah. So it, it's different when it comes to day ones. Yeah. Day ones, that's that, that, that's what is deep. Uh, yeah. I know. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So I want to talk about finding your identity as a trader, especially in the markets right now, because obviously everyone's different. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know I, I tend to say this a lot is that uh, trading is like probably one of the very few places where you meet who you really are because mm -hmm. like it's you versus you right there. Obviously the market is there, but like what you do is so important in that. So how did you end up coming to find your identity within the market? Yeah, first things first, um, I've never even for once said I'm the best at this. Yeah. Uh, that was me, first of all. Because now once you say, me, I'm the best trader, mm. now you're going to go around proving that to people. So true. You don't need that pressure, you know. I can kill any currency pair, but I would never say I'm the boss of what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Because I don't want that pressure, mm. you know. And also, it goes back to who am I as a person first before I am a trader. Okay. Right? So now coming from those humble beginnings to say, um, I've... Well, even when I was making money, I didn't get a big head and say, yeah, I won't mind, I'm the best forex trader in the mm. Israel. Mm. I've never said that, mm. right? So I've always stayed true to who I was, mm -hmm. even when I was making that money. Mm. And then that's just the base of it. Then who am I as a trader? Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm your neighborhood Spider-Man. I'm friends with everyone <laughs> even now. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking any side. Yeah. Find me in Pretoria, find me in Jovek, Devon, Cape Town. Mm. They're all, I'm boys with all of them, mm. you know, cause we are all trading the same market, so that's where we get the money. Mm -hmm. You're not taking anything from me when you, when you place a buy. I'm not taking anything from you when I place a sell. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's why it was easy for me to stay true to who I am, yeah. you know, as a person, not just as a trader. Because okay. I'm a person first before a trader. Yeah. You know? yeah. So I've just, I've just been chilling, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I've stayed true, just yeah. chilling. So I want to ask, uh, coming to trading advice, né? but I want to ask you this way, what's the worst trading advice you ever received? Scared money, don't make money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Now I can hear. <laughs> okay, no, that, that is, yeah, that is... Okay, um, let's just move on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> it, it is, though, it is. It, yeah. It's horrible, but like, yeah, because I, I think there's just so much advice out there that people tend to just absorb, take in, and some people don't know what to choose, what not, what not. And like, I, I obviously, the, the one that I don't like personally is like the no risk, no Lambo one. Mm, no risk, as, no Porsche. Yeah. So like yeah. you see, in as much as you need to take that to heart and think about that clearly before you actually take that to heart, because no risk, no Lambo means that okay, sharp, you need to risk, but you don't need to risk to a yeah. good way. You it's the interpretation eat. behind it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So true. So do you remember your first deposit that you made? Yeah. Yeah. How much was it? Didn't come from my pocket. It was thirty dollars from. <laughs> did you withdraw? Did you make a withdrawal mm -hmm. from that? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. But I had points. That yeah. means I was doing something good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're trading, you get those points. So I got those points. Yeah. So that means I was doing something good. Yeah. Nah, yeah. yeah. But what, what was one way you do you remember one way you actually deposited and made money and made withdrawal? No, just where you deposited from your own pockets. Do you remember? Ah, uh, no. It's too far back. Yeah. It's way too far back. I mean, too far back. Like seven years. Eight years. Yeah. Seven, eight seven years. years. Seven years. Deep. Yeah. yeah. Very deep. Yeah. Um, so what I noticed, so I was going through your Instagram, mm. uh, going back, I went all the way back just to uh, while I was preparing for this interview, and I mm. saw uh, you're somebody who holds trades. Mm. So in other words, you're a swing trader, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So like, what is the odds behind that of like, overcoming that fear of holding a winning trade because I know 
sometimes holding a winning trade can be very difficult. Yeah. Yeah, so how did you master that or like learn to do that over time? Um, when, when, when you go to any trading, trading book, eh? mm. any trading book, there's going to be a part where they tell you um, when you are making money, don't get too overconfident. Mm. Basically, you start adding more positions or, or wasting it, right? Okay. When you're losing money, don't be demotivated, right? So now I take this and put it into my trading. I see that this thing is going. I won't add more positions because I don't want to over leverage my account. I don't want to overexpose my account to more risk. Instead, I'm going to hold that position, mm. right? Already it's a risk free trade. It's gone. It's in, it's in profit, yeah. right? So now why not milk it until it changes direction? Why not? Mm. Right? Because I also have this thing in my head that um, there's people who were buying the same dollar 20 years ago. It's still dropping, bruh. Today, it's still yeah. dropping, bruh. Yeah. You know? So now, if I see a trade, I caught it on a nice high and I'm se it's selling, why not hold it to the lowest it's ever been? Mm. And also, if I don't need the funds, mm. right? So now, my swinging helps me not to overexpose my account to more Tomorrow is trying to trade every day, yeah. right? So that was far back then. Okay. Those are the posts you see from back then. Yeah. And also another thing that helped me is that we're trading dollar accounts at that time, right? So now me and you, I have $600 account, you have a 10,000 ZA account. Mm. Same amount, right? I'm holding a $100 trade. You're holding a 1.5. It's four digits, to me it's three digits. Psychologically, you see a lot of money you want to close. I'm still holding my three digits. By the time I get to four digits, you've already closed your four digits. Who has more money? Mm. I do. Yeah. So now the, the, the key to holding trades, use a dollar account. Because mm. now psychologically, seeing four digits, it's, okay, it's, a, it, it, it's a lot. You're earning maybe $1,000. Yeah, yeah. But this guy is seeing five digits, 15000 Who's going to close first? Yeah. This guy. <laughs> I'm still holding, but it's still the same amount. Yeah. That was the key behind it, me being able to hold. Yeah. You know, using a dollar account. Hmm. That's a really smart, though. So what's like the longest period you've ever, hold, you've ever held a trade? <clears throat> For like a month or two, hmm. right? A month or two. Sure. Yeah, it was GJ. Okay. Yeah, I remember very well. It was in December. Yeah. Yeah, we took the trade. Me and my friends were at my house, took the trade, forgot about December time, drinking, went to Newcastle, Deben, whatever, done that. When I came back, so this, there's no way, there's no way this thing's gonna go back there. Yeah. And I was chasing the new high. Mm. Did it not? It did. Yeah. This. So there was a buy? Mm, there was a buy, I was buying yeah. that thing. You were going yeah, in. I was buying that thing. And also, unfortunately, I didn't use big lots. Yeah. If I did, wow, that would have been my best trade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're actually having a conversation that side about being a sustainable trader because uh, barcoding right there. What are your views on barcoding right there? Gambling, yeah, yeah, scamming. Yeah. Um, also, it's a problem, bruh. Yeah. In, in history, Abandaba failure, Abandaba Besebe, it's cool. Yeah, we have a guy, I don't want to be controversial. Watch, I'm in the bin. I was on this. Yeah. This is overconfidence. Yeah, yeah. Most of the money is down for being overconfident. Mm. You know? So now, same thing. Yes, your trade is right. But now, back home, it's you being overconfident. Mm. It's you trying to prove, you know? Why not use one lot, maybe? There's a cover, I won't get my positions like a money. There's a reason behind it. Someone might say they pay their clients justify. <laughs> no, for leverage reasons. <laughs> this, this, bro. It just open one lot. Why you lose a lot ten about five? <laughs> you know. So it's that, and also it's not sustainable, man. You you the market as you control. Yeah. You know, we trade price as it's being delivered, mm. right? So now, in one time where you are wrong, that means you are losing your whole investment. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. No. Not at all. No, it doesn't make sense. Go to another one time, you are right for five, four days that you made money. Then you are wrong on the last day. You lost all your work. Give it back. <laughs> it's not sustainable. No, no, but there's no. people who can do it. 
yeah. shout out, but it's not for me. Yeah, yeah. Not for me. And you and I'm obviously judging by the way you're speaking, you would not mm. recommend that to anyone, right? No, bro. Yeah. No. <laughs> you don't do it. But it, it's a culture though, it's become such a trend, right? Can I call it a trend of like everyone needs to do this now? No, it's funny about trends, bro. Yeah. They don't last, bro. Mm. That's the funny part about trends. Yeah. They don't. Uh, well put, well put. Even in my training, someone yeah. would say, but Langa, you have a screenshot somewhere on Instagram with a thousand positions. I'm like, okay, look at that screenshot. Mm. This one was entered at 10 rand. This one was entered at 11 rand. I kept compounding. Mm. If you check all of them, different prices. Yeah. It's still, it's not a barcode. I entered two positions here. It went to profit, lock my profit. Now I, I can risk again. Mm. Add. Because I know, essentially, it's moving from 10 rand to 20 rand. Yeah. I added 11, I added 12, I added 13. I, I keep adding, mm. protecting my capital. Yeah. You know? So, position at but look at the price, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And sometimes there's accounts where I'm like, ah, this account I don't care, even if it plays. <laughs> there is always those days. Yeah. Uh, so, when you're aiming, so... Has there been a day when you were aiming for like big profits mm. and it didn't go your way? Yeah. So how do you deal with those emotions or how do you deal with that? Because obviously you had a trade planned out mm -hmm. and I think this happens to a lot, all of us. Mm, yeah. You have a trade planned out and it doesn't go your way and this was the trade where you were like, no, this is it. Mm. Um, firstly, it's go, go back, you know, go back. Um, you did something wrong, obviously, mm. right? I've never been one to say manipulation. No one is after my thousand dollar, bruh. There's no manipulation. No one is after my thousand dollar. There's yeah. trillions traded daily. Yeah. No one is after my thousand dollar. Come on. There's something wrong with my strategy, right? Mm. And fortunately enough, I learned on this day with a thousand dollar. I don't want to learn in 10 years when I have a hundred thousand dollar account, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So this is the loss I can take and I learn from it. For, um, firstly, it's annoying, pisses me off that I lost the trade. But now, after so many years, bruh, yeah. I've learned to accept that there's losses as long as my wins are going to be more than my losses. I can easily take that loss. It's my L, you know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's cool. Um, so what do you, what do you currently trade mostly at the current moment? Um, I'm trading two currencies mostly. Okay. It's the GBP USD. Um, it's the CAT JPY. Then I trade Nasdaq. Okay. Yeah, I've found a new love with Nasdaq. Yeah. The moment it's dying out. You can check a lot of people were trading Nasdaq at that time. They've moved on to other pairs, US 30, mm. German 30. For me, only this time around, I've fallen in love with it because now I understand how to trade it, mm. right? Firstly, I'm not trading it blindly. I'm trading it, it's, it's like a job for me. Mm. I know at, at three, I have, have to be in front of the market cause that's New York open. So when they clock in, when they get to Wall Street, now I mean that I'm clocking in, good tech station, yeah, good trading station, yeah. at, at 12, when they take lunch, New York time, and I'm that's why I don't trade during that hour. It's lunch time, so there's a lot of manipulation at that time. After lunch, I go back, I trade. Then at close, which is 10 here in South Africa, I'm done. Right? So now it's a job for me. Mm. So now understanding that price action and how it moves during that period gave me not just confidence but the respect for the pay, Nasdaq, mm. and me of what I'm learning throughout that seven hour period mm. so for me i have a job now yeah. trading nasdaq with the new york guys yeah. now i love nasdaq because i understand why does it why is it volatile at half past three because mm. the open is at three mm. u.s open three but half past three is the stock open oh. that's why it's volatile at that time oh. at that time i'm already in an entry i'm not panicking mm. i'm not gambling despair saying you saying it right i'm trading volatility I'm trading extract mm. right then at 10 I'm done. Yeah. Clock out. I can do whatever I want to do. I can go back to currencies or whatever. Mm. You know? So now, with that understanding of Nasdaq, that's why I'm enjoying trading it now. Mm. Right now, it's on top three. It's there. Yeah. yeah. So this is basically your daily routine every day. Yeah, if I don't have any other commitments. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. And also, I have targets. I have my weekly targets, 
would help me reach my, I have, I have my daily target. They help me reach my weekly. My weekly helps me reach my monthly, mm. right? So now if I have a weekly target, let's say 5,000 rands, right? From whatever account size. I make that money on Tuesday. Yeah. I'm no longer obligated to trade on Wednesday. Okay. But if there's an opportunity, I'll take it. But I'm no longer obligated. Mm. Now, having also, not trading is also trading. Yeah, you know? so true. So now, not trading on, on, on that day because I've reached my target helps me not overexpose my accounts to more risk. Mm. You know, because I've reached my target. Yeah. You know? Then me, I'm going to withdraw. And then the money that's left, I'm like, ah, this one. Even if it blows, <laughs> I've reached my target, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I still, I still do. Of course, I do make some mistakes, of yeah, course. Yeah. Get overconfident also. Um, get greedy. It's, it's human nature, man. It's, you know? it's part of the game. Yeah, so it, sometimes I do it. I won't say in here and say, ah, me, I'm disciplined. What? Just yesterday, I blew an account. Yeah. So, what does it, <laughs> you know, so I can't can, can sit here and lie to you, man. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah, um, so when you open a chart, uh, what's the first thing you focus on? Like, what's the first thing you notice when you open a chart, the first thing you interact with or you look for? Let me put it like that. Um, I backtest my the price action from yesterday, as I said, um, I, I, I clock in now, yeah. you know. So, when I clock in, I check okay, what happened after market close, right? What happened, okay, what happened post the market. What happened pre-market, mm. right? I said, okay, now I know what to expect in the market, okay. right? That's what I look for. Then I go and look for, with regards to Nasdaq, I'm just gonna focus on that. Yeah. I look for um, any fundamentals that are gonna affect the price movement for that day, mm. right? Then I check out on my people I mentor, check out on what, what are they looking at, yeah. yeah. Then that's about it, then I, I zone off, it's just me and the chats, I'm gone. No more on phone and I'm Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> so, uh, what time frame are you looking at per se mostly? One hour and M15 oh, okay. for Nasdaq. Of Nasdaq. Yeah. And of currency. currency is D1, H4, H1. Yeah. Yeah. So, H1 would be your entry. Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah. No, that's cool. cool. Yeah, so. Um, okay, so I want to say your best trade that you've ever had, but. Your craziest best trade that you've ever had, the trade where you look at and you're like, yeah, no, yeah, you don't know what was happening, but you were you went in and it was a big winner for you. Um, crazy enough, it's most recent, man. Is it? It's most recent. It's like two weeks ago. I've been holding Nasdaq sales, man. Yeah. I've been holding Nasdaq sales. Um, cause it's all on I, I wasn't intending on yeah. holding Nasdaq sales, but looking at the geopolitics, right? Looking at knowing that the virus is still not over, right? Mm. Looking at how price reacted when the virus was announced. Mm. Looking at how it reacted at when the war started, right? So, okay, there's potential for this thing to drop twice as much as it did yeah. during those um, events, right? So, okay, let me hold. And then it's ending season last week and this week. Yeah. Of course, these tech companies are not doing so now why must I close these trades because this thing is dropping yeah. and I don't need that money now? Yeah. Why? Hmm. Why? So Unless they say um, ceasefire. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we have the definite vaccine. This yeah. thing is gone. Yeah. You know, for now, ceasefire, I'm closing my trades. I'm done. Mm. Right. Look for new positions with regards to the virus, knowing this thing is still on a drop. Yeah. Right. Also keeping in mind that there's, it's a, it's a, it's a, tech-driven indice, right? So now looking at the performance of these tech companies, that might change my bias on the sell, yeah. you know? So I'm always uh, up to date with what's happening, you know? Mm -hmm. I know, okay, whenever we get these small pullbacks, I know why. Yesterday we got a rise, I know why. Microsoft, good earnings, good. But what's the direction? Is the war over? They yeah. started this downtrend? No. Then why are you, why, 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 why are you closing yourself? Do you need the man? Yeah. If you want to close and use the man. If you don't need it, yeah. then why close? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just, just out of curious. Obviously, right now we know. Uh, you, it seems like you've got your, can I say, your geopolitics on point, something yeah. like that. 
So are you looking at the whole Elon Musk taking over Twitter thing? Is that something that you're looking to capitalize on? Or do you think it's not going to affect anything long term? Or is it just like, it's just that? It's just Elon Musk doing no. what Elon Musk is doing? It's not, man. How many billionaires have been buying stuff, bruh? Yeah. How many? Like, he bought it from someone. Yeah. You know, he did the stuff being bought. Um, Jeff Bezos divorcing didn't affect the market that much. I'd like to think, yeah. but I don't. I don't think him buying Twitter has any impact on the market. The only difference that it has, I saw a negative correlation because he used Tesla's stock as collateral to say. Mm -hmm. So now, when Twitter stock goes up, Tesla stock goes down. Yeah. You know, so there's this negative correlation because now, if Twitter say a dura, it share a coin, and when we say collateral up, that means you owe more now. Yeah. So of course it's all drop. Yeah. So I saw that negative correlation, but it's not something I think I pick test because it's new. So I'm giving a couple of weeks and say, okay, it's actually there. Mm -hmm. You know, for now it's just what I I noticed in the past couple of days. Yeah. You know? So yeah. So I don't think it impacts into that because my glues are up open if it's hang up, so we balance. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. True. So that's that's just about it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um. So what's your worst trade that you've ever like taken? Oh. West Street. I remember we were driving down to, to Newcastle uh, in two cars. Went to the airport to collect a rental car. Then we had a convoy, right? And this one guy is telling us, listen, it's in the other car. Yeah. Like, James, I'm buying Nasdaq. It's December time. Mm. I'm buying Nasdaq. Like, aye, we are not buying. Um, halfway around, around Villiers or something, he said, James, this thing, I'm up 22k or something. And then I entered blindly. I'm like, ah, listen. Bro, I kept funding that account to protect it. Ended up messing up the funds we were going to use for the, for, the, for the trip. <laughs> I kept. And then eventually it blew, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was like one of my worst trades. How much was it? It's because you say you kept funding. Let's say, let's say 50K for now. Mm. Yeah. And, and remember, um, the market... Um, environment now is different from back then. For you to make 10k back then, you had to trade GBB, JPY, gold with big lot sizes. Yeah. Today, you just open Nasdaq, three positions, you have made 500 points, you've made 10k. Yeah. Back then, it was hard. Yeah. It was hard to make 10k, but I won't lie to you. Because being a common Nasdaq and all of this, it will be expensive. More trade gold, I climb it to my mile in the account. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, it, was, it was hard. My leverage will be as serious as 1 is to 500. Mm. You even get 1 is to 100. Mm. So there's no time for you to over leverage your account just to, because you want to flip it. Yeah. So the environment back then was different from now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, at that time, if, if we would manage uh, blow it, okay, sharp. I'm it's on 5K? Okay. And I'm account to 2.5. A1 game, A1 game. I make it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, different times indeed, really different times. Yeah. Uh, in terms of trading books, uh, do you have a favorite uh, trading book that you've read? No. You don't? I have one, I don't know which Palo one that I use. Okay. But I don't have men. You know, I realized this even with my YouTube videos, even my videos I was watching. Someone had told me, Yo, I found your videos on YouTube. Um, Yo, please teach me how to trade. I'm like, I don't even trade like that anymore. Yeah. It's evolved. Yeah, I don't even trade like that yeah. anymore. You know, so with books also. Okay. The market conditions are, have changed. Mm. Right now, there's a new traders who are trading during the war, man. Mm. Their trading experience is different from the ones we had. There was not so much volatility in the market. Yeah. So now, if we're going to 2019, don't see because the market conditions are different. Yeah, that's so true. That's you know, so true. I, I it took time off. I wasn't even posting that much about trading last year because I was going through some stuff. Né? And then I told myself, listen, this year, first half of the year, because um, when you're losing money, you need to go back and find out why. Mm. Right? So the first half of the year, first four months, I'm refining my skill, approach chance. In fact, I don't find this. When I was fake, I it before me, and I said, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I don't find this. I went to so that was my first four months of the year. I was okay. focusing on refining my skill, right? Next four months, even more I preach, I'm posting my profits and posting my charts, man. Mm. The next four months, I'm posting my profits. 
Yeah. Like foundation say corn, skills yeah. corn, no doubt about that. Yeah. Now I'm building the walls. Then the last four months, that's when ye ah what's being said up in Satlama Champagne, taking more to you know. And then from that structure, I'm never gonna lose it again. Because mm. foundation, building, young kind of I'm a complete trader. Because there's people who are not mal, but they are skilled. There's people who are skilled, but they are mal. Because they are not fund. Understand? When I to 100k, I find the account that has a signal or a trade, and get lucky for two months, I've been a million. Mm. But it doesn't make him a better trader than the guy who is a million. Yeah, so true. Yeah. Which is crazy because also, if you skill, skilled, I'm not <laughs> so it's it's, bro. I've, I've I've had time to sit back and look and laugh about things. Yeah. Yeah. So you're running a business right now. What services are you offering? How can people find you? Um. Currently, I do training and mentoring. Right. Do training and mentoring. You can go on my Instagram, and then looking at the at the volume of people I have. Wanting to learn from me, you know, and these people who see the skill, I, that's what I enjoy about this whole journey now. Mm. They're not seeing the lifestyle that we used to live back there. Yeah. They are seeing the skill. Yeah. So now we created a Discord server. A server on Discord, there's everything there preloaded. I have videos there, I have PDFs there. I have, I have a setup like this, I screenshot, I do a breakdown why I took this trade. It's preloaded, it's there, yeah. right? You can access it anytime, mm. right? And there's also on that server, there's signals, right? So you pay a one-off fee, it's like a combo fee. You pay that money, it's like $165. You get access to daily signals and information to learn at any time, whenever you want to learn. Mm. Like, so that's, this is helping me not to have a lot of volume and start neglecting other mentees. Mm. But it's there, do it yourself. Yeah. I have a video there and then, but if you pay extra for mentorship straight, then that's why you can never sit down and talk. Yeah. But now, there's a video there, there's a PDF there, mm -hmm. there's market breakdowns every Sunday, there's signals every day. Yeah. What more do you need, man? Mm -hmm. It's there. I have a setup, I send it on Sunday, I break it down. Every day I send a signal and updates on those setups. Yeah. Right. And then there's videos pre recorded back then. Mm -hmm. It's for you to learn at any time. Mm. If you want signals, they are there. It's one to one so you get it all. Okay. Uh, so now that's me trying to save my time. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So the thing is, how have you maintained a good reputation in the industry for so long? Like, what is what is it that you're doing that's different from? I can't even I'm on Twitter now. Actually, I say, I'm posting. My luck is I'm posting. <laughs> then I give my phone to my uncle and he says, I'm going to go to the house. No, man. It's a, it's a matter of... I made money. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. Right? Commission, because I was trading. I'm going to go to the house if I'm a trade. Yeah. So basically, I'm going to go to the house in a way. Right? And then... I'm going to go to the house in Malcon. Resorting with your body, I want to man and then it was hard because all color, even money is called. Bumbang a corner by your body, you might. We can't get some bully, let us alone. So, Bolega has never been in my thing, mm. and I've been a co creed. Okay. There was a time where I mentored someone in October, in November, December, disappears, comes back to me January with 500k. Imagine, got a fund of trader. November. Mm. Someone gives you 500k. End of the Puma Blemal. No family trust. And Sibin's in Minicabang Negale Mal. The way Falam. I'm like, serious. What? Yeah. I'm like, bro, you're about to kill it, right? You're, 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 you're next in the game. You're over famous. Yeah. Right? He blew that account, bro. Gone. And the account was blown. Why? I ran as a skilled soap trader, firstly. Okay. December be younger trade. We found that November trade. Yeah. December be younger trade. Now you've never managed ten thousand. You think you wanna manage five hundred thousand? Yeah. Can't. Can't. It's two years in Gambo, I'm I saw him against a number NP two hundred. So what I'm saying, clearly chosen. I'm squatting somewhere. Apparently, the money is the Puma Now, Balegil. 
So now I saw that. So I don't, I don't want to be this guy. Yeah. There were times where I'm going to trade the Malio Mondo, I blow. Mm. I won't say I've never done, I've done it. Mm. I blow it. Mm. And then if Leo Malio ends the profit, the so share, right? Same okay. grand. But now because he loses, and Diego Maga says I'm going to put it in the lamp, so who made a loss here? Yeah. I did. Yeah. So why must I keep doing that thing again? Mm. If you win for a linking. Mm. Then so I stopped doing it. I've never had problems with signals because I deliver all the time. Yeah. Never had problems with mentees. If you don't know what I say, I say, how did you apply it? Mm. Maybe in King who application. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always accessible to people who want me. No man could take my loss on so long. It's important. Doctor, are you COVID? And I hope people <laughs> will take notes. Satana my notes. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can go to one by a ballet. Move the house. I'm going to go to ballet. Yeah. Man, go to doctor. Vets are you, come on. Yeah. What do you wanna do then? Are you? What can you do? If you want to go, come on. I'm going to ring you. Set time. Sit down with them. Find out. In King, was it how you delivered it, or did they deliver? I saw seven things. I'm going to get conditions of mind. Oh. Um, I'm going to say that 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 I'm going to say uh, Instagram I, deleted. I understand. I understand yeah. fully. No, um, mm. we've come to the end of the interview. Yeah. Um, before I let you go, uh, can you kindly just give some advice uh, for the traders out there? Hey, but honestly, um, just know that trading is your own personal journey, right? Mm. Not your friends, mm. not your, not the guy you are sitting next to with last name mentoring. Mm. It's your own personal journey. It's just you against you, man. Yeah. It's you against your fears of holding money. It's you against your fear of losing money. Mm -hmm. So it's all in you, bruh. Yeah. It's not when you're losing money, you play my market conditions. Because when you're making money, I wish you would say, hey, mama, you don't know. So it's all on you, bruh. Yeah. It's your own personal trading journey. Just, just focus on it. And then also block out the noise, man. You know? It's always about um, look ahead, not who's beside you. If your friend is not there, keep going, bruh. You know, so it's always about made up. Just look ahead and keep keep working, bro. Yeah. yeah. Okay, love. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Kim. For inviting us into your space, the yeah. side of, of yeah. town. And yeah, I know, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something today. I'm sitting here with Lala. Yeah, yeah, Lala. 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 I'm chilling here with Rihanna, aka also known as Ulanga. Yeah. And thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Mugli Tambani from Top Trainer South Africa, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Nice. Cheers, guys. <laughs>